Now, it was Shakespeare's birthday on uh, April 23rd, but he was born on April 23rd, so it's not likely that his birthday was actually on April 23rd. There's uh, a celebration of Shakespeare coming up on Sunday here. Robin Hirsch is doing that, and I want to thank Robin Hirsch and Angela Virgo for uh, allowing us to present this as the fourth edition of the MIT Poetry Collective here at the this is the fourth here, the fifth altogether. I still, I don't hear, I don't hear my voice yeah. in my ear. I hear it. Okay, so if Shakespeare were alive today, he would write something like in the new mode. Uh, this is called like. So uh, Shakespeare's, this would be something like Shakespeare's Ode to Like. And it has some allusion to Shakespeare. Like. Like is like, you know, like what my friends like. I want to be like, light. So I like to ask like what they like. So that I can know, you know, what I like. So that we could be like friends. Like the black goth sizzle band, I got a lot of likes when I asked. So they must be like good. Like, good is what they like like i would be very like confused if i didn't like know what you like so that we could like be friends like to like or not to like that is like the question <laughs> Now, in the summer, in April and uh, May of 1980, Allen Ginsberg had a very uh, raunchy time up at Boulder, Colorado, at the uh, at Naropa, and uh, he had a number of lovers, and then wrote a very graphic poem about it, a sapphic poem in, in the uh, form of Sappho's. Sappho's um, wrote a poem, a syllabic poem. Now, his, uh, this graphic poem was very uh, disturbing to Alan's mother, so she wrote a poem to him from the grave, of course. <laughs> this is a sapphic poem by Alan Ginsberg's mother, written to, from the grave to Alan in Boulder, Colorado, May 29, 1980. Ay, Alan, what makes you different from the others? Driving me with sugar to the crazy house for mothers. I've got this Jewish nice girl makes good soup. Remember that girl, Rebecca, you used to schmooze with on the shul steps at the Sabbath service? Oh, I don't like that word. As I was saying, matzo ball soup, good for you. Help cure that cold you got from cold Colorado nights. What were you doing? Dancing in Naropa, a barefoot wild kid crazy. You knew him and came? I never heard such language from you before. When you were going to Hebrew school, you got good grades. Oh, he's so nice in your bar mitzvah suit. Maybe matzo balls Rebecca makes make you forget these other balls you're so crazy about. I never should have let you go to Columbia. So far, you met crazy boys. Jack Kerouac, William Burroughs, and Gregory Corso, and Neil Cassidy. He was the one, that Neil, make you most crazy. You think boys are girls. How do you make babies? You come in behind? That's Meshuga, Meshugas. I remember you were a good boy. You said Kaddish for me, Rebecca. She's waiting on the shul steps. Come home, Alan. She's nice. Okay, now, the theme of this poetry reading for me is birds. Now, birds were mystical creatures in pagan times, even in early Christian times. Now we know, understand them scientifically. Anyway, this poem is about crows, and it's called Them. And to help you get into this poem, it's really about the invasion of the new social media, the digital age, computers coming upon us very slowly, beginning in the late 70s, 80s, and 90s, and now they appear as crows. This is called Them. First we heard buzzing, then a black cloud of birds, a blank the sun, we turned around, everything seemed the same, seemed the same. A decade later, buzzing heard again, a row of crows. Screens transfixed our eyes, our fingers pounded the keys set before us. Then buildings awoke, lamps flared, 
past shades, the blind, the midnight sun. We didn't know who lived there, but we knew it wasn't us. Wasn't us. Then creaking in our basements, lonely wails, whispers, lines of crows, we cowered beneath the sheets, we cowered, covered our ears. Then we, the people, faded, faded into pavements, and they appeared, blank eyes, wires protruding from ears, eyes fixed, staring. It was late, too late, a line of crows everywhere, crouched, staring into air, swaying, tapping, swaying to invisible music, swaying to invisible music, only they could hear. The predator drone is a bird, and there are many of the new uh, predators coming out. They're named after birds. So this poem mixes the new predator trek technology, which has become our new way of fighting wars without having to put our boys at risk, mixing it with songs. This is called Wired, Wired for War. Global Hawk, Predator Drone, Reaper, Avenger, with Gorgon stare. Raven's gyre, your face, my face, Kilroy was here. iPhone with sensor package, Reaper surveillance zone, switchblade dance, Hell's Kitchen, ash and bone. Mac the knife, Jack the ripper, pearly white, Jenny diver, navy sea fox, the shark has blood on stone. Predator avenger, shock and awe, Kmart, Kmax, God, and Law, Hummingbird, Switchblade, Phantom Eye, Raven's Wood, Nevermore, The Folded Lie. Now this is called Elephant, another this is the genocide of the elephants. The last time I read a poem about the rhinos called Pina and the Rhino. This is called Elephant, the disappearing species. Elephant, there was a creature from was and aft who was so large that tall was small, who never saw his art as craft, who never came unless we called. He had a schnoz, we called a trunk, to see him swing it fore and aft, we laughed until we fell to drunk, rained him peanuts, shells, and laughed. He did whatever we told him to, strolled through fire or a hoop, loved us with a glue that's true, yes, did whatever we told him to. A ballerina on his back, pirouette and jeté, he lumbered forward, fore and aft, re roared play, what he thought, a lioness cage, a whip, is shaft. Some say this creature dreamed the dream of wingy wings and floppy ears. Some say happened, some say seen. One day this creature disappeared. You guys can hear me back there. Yep, yep, loud and clear. Great, okay. This is called Mockingbird. Now, uh, mockingbirds are birds that exactly imitate the melodies of other birds. This makes them a uh, subject of uh, martyrdom. Uh, they, they're indigenous to the South, and Harper Lee chose the title of her book to kill a mockingbird for a reason. Mockingbird. Here on earth the bird was heard, sang at morn, a song was torn. Earth was bone, blood and stone, broken song as, as grief is long. Skull was ash, skull was dawn, swerve of light, a song was torn. A shade flew past Calvary, a shadow passed beyond the glass. Now, uh, we're living in an age of the war on terror. When you're living in an age like this, an age of paranoia, it's very difficult to see exactly what's happening around you. What seems totally rational seems completely mad from outside the circle. 
When I was a child, we were afraid of communism. We had take cover drills. My wife, who works on Long Island, tells me they have take cover drills, two kinds of drills, where the children have to be, what are they called? Shelter. Shelter drills, yes. Where the children have to do the same things. I haven't read any articles about this. Now, this is called The Grey Goose Flies. Now, Lead Belly wrote a song about the Grey Goose, and Jack Elliott has sung it. And this is my version of the Grey Goose, which could be perhaps the terrorists that we never seem to be able to catch. They were terrorists back in the days of slavery. They were the blacks, the Indians. The terrorists were wobblies and Union guys in the uh, turn of the century and in the 30s. And then there were the communists when I was growing up, and now it's the international terrorists who live in caves. I, I suggest people look at films of Nuremberg rallies to see real, real threats to us. Okay, this is called But the Gray Goose Flies. Predator trip, predator, but the gray goose sighs. We shoot him dead, but the gray goose flies. Grim re reaper, black hawk down, but the gray goose flies, hear his sound. Squawks like a hawk, black hawk down, but his wings are feather, invisible sound. Swirls in a gyre, a circle sound, silent music, hider down. Strategy of lethal force, the moon is pulled on iron course, pulls of the tide with iron force, wail of birds, the gray goose shriek, the iron tear down Pluto's cheek. Where is the goose? He's everywhere. Why do we kill him? It's love, my dear. Love that grips the joystick clutch, love that gleams the screen's light touch, touch of love, touch of fire, the Lord's sweet justice, the swerve of desire. The gray goose shot falls to ground, falls so soft, invisible sound. The gray goose dragged o'er bog and stream, prepped for oven to baste and steam, corded and ripped, placed on plate, steak knife sharpened for palate's sake. But the goose flies up, he is not dead, squawks like a hawk, black hawk, red, swirls in a gyre, invisible sound, swirls past the rim, never found never found. Look up, look up, the gray goose sighs. We shot him dead, but the gray goose flies. Wow. This is called Skylock. This is a, a riff on a poem by Milton. Handel set it to music in the Allegro, the Mato Arco, the Pensaloso. This is my version of the bird poem that Milton wrote. It's called Skylock. Skylock, sweet bird, rise in birth beyond the folly of the earth. Float down and up the rigging ship, glide round and round, reel and dip. See figuring, figurines fall up and down, swoop up the cloud, the glistening crown. Beyond silhouettes that prostrate and pray to the specter of dismay. The ebony form, the swaying hill, the frozen face, the whitened chill. O Skylark, sing your song, the rising sun, nor right nor wrong. As we cataract, blind and fall, sing your song, lightning fall. Lift us to your rise and fall, beyond the mayhem and display, beyond the specter of dismay. O Skylark, sweet bird, rise and birth, beyond the folly of the earth. Now, this is, the sky to us is, uh, we see it in one way, very scientifically. Like poets and uh, people in ancient times, even people today in villages in the mountains in the Andes, perhaps see the sky in a different way. This is for Emily Dickinson. This is the way she might have seen the sky, or any poet who looks up and sees something other than what we've been told is there. The sky that is, the sky that was, what Emily saw for Emily Dickinson. The sky that is we see as dust, what drifts beyond we see as must. The force of light, the force of dark, the contingent flame, the chance of spark. The stars that drift, the exhausted sun that splits in two returns to one. The moon that turns on iron course and pulls the sea with iron force. The sky that was what Emily saw, the sky that was beyond before. Before the name of sky was said, beyond the valley of the dead, a pyramid is what Emily saw. 
the sphinx that flew beyond before. She saw a sequel, a circle beyond, invisible as music, but positive as sound. This last poem is going to be about being wired again. We live in a very wired culture, and this was written on the train going into Wall Street. Now, the title of this poem is what this poem is not about. It's about cyberspace wall or the walls, the wires coming out of people's ears. Different from the subway system I remember as a child. This is not a poem about a cockroach, the Holocaust, or sex. This is a poem about a wall, not the Berlin Wall, Great Wall in China, West Bank, Bank Wall, Wailing Wall, Wall between Yuma and Calexico, or the mossy wall in my basement waiting for the contractor to cement. This is a poem about the digital wall, cyber wall on the three train pulling into Wall Street. See the yellow scarf, lips quivering, rocking to and fro. She's not praying. She's wired, electrodes protruding, rocking behind the cyber gray, eyes dropped in this way for months, waiting for her stop. See the lady with the blue bag stirring pink yogurt in a cup, everyone wired staring, zombies swaying on the three train, thumbs and pinkies dancing on blueberries. Don't let your eyes lock, rock behind the cyber block. See the numbers tattooed on the gray beard's forearm. Must be his mate's phone number. Is that a can of Raid in her black sack? Must be a Coke can. And the slender curve of her ankle peeking out from her habit. A nun, a nun, look up. This is not a poem about a cockroach, the Holocaust, or sex. Thank you very much. And thank you to the audience, to the wonderful features, to uh, Jay, Patrizio, Vincent, and to the prayer of its poets. You guys were fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.